So this is Mr. Eugene Britt um, at his home um, in Urbana in March 2011. Um, first of all, Mr. Brett, um, just thank you for, for giving me some of your time. Um, w were you born in Champaign-Urbana? Yes, I was. And um, if you don't mind me asking, um, when were you born? Uh, August 31st, 1955. Okay. Um, and were your parents born in Champaign-Urbana? No, my parents were born in Tennessee. Okay. And, uh, my, my dad and my mom both was born in uh, Huntington, mm -hmm. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you know when, when they migrated up to Champaign? Uh, I, I was thinking uh, it had to been in the late 30s when they migrated here. Mm -hmm. Because I have uh, three older brothers and a sister, and all of us, except my oldest sister, was born here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and everybody else was born here in Chapman. Mm -hmm. My mom, all she did was clean houses. Mm -hmm. you know. My dad, what he did was. Uh, he did pretty much construction. He wanted mm -hmm. to help build the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He helped build 57, and mm -hmm. he also helped build um, 74. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Several years ago. Mm -hmm. What was the address of the house you grew up in? The house I grew up in? Yeah. Uh, it was on Church Street. Okay. It was right behind Salem Church. It was, okay. It was actually, it was next door to, uh, uh, it was a school right there. Willard, is that right? right Willard, yeah. yeah. And then there was uh, the Magnils, and then uh, the Blackwells, and then us. Mm -hmm. and so that's where Center for Women in Transition is now? Yeah. Okay. Was anything happening at the, the Fifth and Hill site when you were growing up? At that time, no, it wasn't mm -hmm. anything going on at that site. I knew they had a, it was a power company right mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, but at that time, you know, uh, there was a lot of us that just played over mm -hmm. in that area, you know. Mm -hmm. um, other than that. Uh, yeah. Did, um, what, did you go to a church, and what church did your did your family attend? Morningstar Free Will. Morningstar? Yeah, they just celebrated their 100th anniversary. Did you, they really? Yeah. And what, so, um, what, what, what grade school did you go to? I went to, uh, Washington mm -hmm. and Marquette. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, you went to, um, Central High School? Yeah, I went to, uh... Or I guess it was Champaign? We went to Franklin. Okay, Franklin. And then we went to Central. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But at that time, we, you know, there was no bus service or anything mm -hmm. like that, so we had mm -hmm. to walk to school every day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so what... I'm just trying to contextualize this. What what years were you in high school? Around the mid '60s, late '60s. Yeah, it was around the mid. Yeah, it was right right in the time of the mid mid '60s when I went into high school, to junior high, and uh, early '70s when I went into high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, was there any talk of the desegregation process when you were um, in high school, or had that happened started in junior, uh, high. junior high? Yeah. That's when they start. They, you know, right down there, over there, where uh, uh, you know, Mercy Hospital was right down there on Park Street, and they used to have that nurse convent right there, uh, right across the street. And they used to have uh, rallies and uh, you know meetings there. You know, mm -hmm. right around the time of the desegregation and marches and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and that was in there. It was about the middle '60s. That's when that was starting to happen. When when did you um, get started? Become interested in in art and in, in becoming an artist? You know what? Really, what I did was, you know, I advertised art. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, mean, uh, I as you can see, I'm not an art, I'm not an artist per se. I advertised okay. a lot of art. Okay. What I did was, you know, I uh, um, really originally got involved in it when I actually through. Uh, Educational Resources and Environmental Science. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I knew a lot of artists, you know, like like the Jesse Knoxes and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Hunter Brothers and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you know. And uh, um, I had an opportunity to um, you know, get some penitentiary art and do displays around Champagne in the banks and stuff like that, you know, which was really good, you know. And from there, you know, I got an opportunity to be able to... Uh, you know, go into the community because it was through Dave Monk, mm -hmm. you know, and he uh, helped me with a grant 
<laughs> and what we did was we took and tried to educate the community on you know the beauty of art and stuff like that you know and just how important it was you know mm -hmm. and um you know, and how I could really, you know, if I really pursued it, you know, I, it could be a career for, you know, for somebody. Um, and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. Then I got involved in some, some, uh, some, some other stuff. <laughs> Which I, uh, it kind of just, it kind of pushed me away from things in the community a little bit. Yeah. I um, I guess I got a little upset because of uh, some of the things that uh, pretty much the ministers was doing in the community. You know, you know, they had an alliance that was going on that was really, really strong, and some of the stuff they was doing in the community was making leeway to making changes or helping to not allow, you know, especially the North End community to be stereotyped. You know, because in the early seventies, you know. Uh, 70s, 80s, and the 90s, you know, if you really try to say, if I wanted to, no matter what type, if I had a degree or didn't have a degree, and I tried to play for, you know, be competitive and apply for a job, you know, that would get me out of the community, and if I put my address as the North End mm -hmm. community, you mm -hmm. know, I would be stereotyped. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And I, I thought the Men's Stories of Life could have did something about that. Kind of just made me feel. Uh, it made me feel like the struggle was not worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I backed off. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. It's still a sore spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, let let me um um let me back up just a little bit. Um, how did you or um, how did you first start working with Dave Monk? Did you approach him? Did he approach you? How did that how did that collaboration kind of emerge? I approached, uh, I went over there and applied for a job okay. with Dave Mark, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, actually they was, uh, I think it was through the consortium, they was, uh, you know, looking for help, you mm -hmm. know, and when I went over there and I talked to him, and uh, he pretty much took me on, mm -hmm. you know, he showed me about photography a little bit, you know, helped me to understand it, and, uh, and, and, and it was good for me, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. what it did for me, you know, it you know, it helped me to look at look at look at the beauty of my community, you know, and see that it was a lot there. But also too, you know, it helped me to be able to, you know, to uh, I don't know, take our community and not so much the community but but a lot of people that was about to graduate out of high school that were artists. Mm -hmm. Be able to get them involved in that their mural project because they were, it was a grant was funded mm -hmm. for us to be able to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a really, really good project, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and that's what, you know, I don't know, you met Angela. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, Angel right. and Angela really wanted me to, to try to talk to you because the way that she remembered it, she re really remembered you as one of the, the key figures in, in, in getting the process really rolling. Like, right. and, her, and her, the way that she remembered, like, it probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. She, she saw you as kind of a, a key figure in, in getting, getting everything to yeah. come together. Yeah, I was actually in there, you know, and I, I was actually one of the ones who interviewed a lot of the, you know, the, it was pr primarily just high school students mm -hmm. that was planning on going to college, you mm -hmm. know, that had, uh, you know, some artistic background, was willing to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And we funded that project, you know, um, we got funds for that project and, mm -hmm. and it took it off, it took off. Now, um, how did you decide to have Angela Rivers create kind of the, um the design for the mural. Well, we sit down, we talked about it and stuff like that, you know. And she just kind of, she kind of said, well, you know, it'd be a good idea, you know, to, to put some, you know, to. It was kind of like a tribute to those that migrated from the south up here, mm -hmm. you know, and how it changed or how the, how you know it, it came from, you know, a lot of stuff. Well, how they migrated from uh, the south and when how they got here and how a lot of changes occurred in the community mm -hmm. you know especially you know down around uh hill street area mm -hmm. there was a lot of changes in that area mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know how, how long have you been in this area just since um 2005 
Okay. Yeah. It's because back in the back in the seventies, sixties, and seventies, you know, there was a lot of alleys and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of alleys had a lot of fruit trees mm-hmm. and stuff, grapevines, and, and that's where a lot of the kids, you know, back then, you know, got an opportunity to be able to, you know, to really play and have mm-hmm. fun and, you know, do a lot of things, be you know, independent, really, mm-hmm. you know, and. Uh, it helped us all to be able to, you know, have a bit of a bond or camaraderie together so that, you know, you know, uh, a lot of us, you would probably want to see us out on the main street, but you see a lot of us in, you know, just through the alleys and stuff like that. A lot of alleys are not here anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. So it's, you know, I, I think a lot of that's becoming much more commercialized now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's sad that that has to happen, you know. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't even know why that, that, that there even had to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wait, did you have you lived in Champaign Urbana your entire life, or have you have you moved away at all? I moved away for uh, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, mm-hmm. for about six months. Okay. And, uh, it's just something about Champaign Urbana that just grabbed, made me move back this mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. That's what I did. I ended up coming back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, looking back on 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 the mural, um, do you th- do you think it had had the impact that um, you and other people involved hoped it would have, or what what are you looking? What do you kind of see? It was about the first ten years, it had it had a great impact on the community and it helped us become aware of our environment. Mm-hmm. And it looked like a lot of what you've seen in the community before the mural, you know. Um, you know, the neighborhood, not to say that it was a run-down neighborhood, but, you know, a lot of people took a lot better pride in that community, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it kind of just helped build self-esteem because mm-hmm. this is something that actually, you know, it, it, it had an impact on them in mm-hmm. their lives. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, it's something that, you know, where I didn't have to walk across town or across, you know, to on the university to be able to see something that was actually artistic, beautiful, and I could, you know, it had something to do with my family. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And that's, and that's, and that, and that, that's a self-esteem builder. That, mm-hmm. you know, that, and it stayed for 10 years. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, that, that much of it, you know, it was, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what, what happened after 10 years that, that things changed? You really want to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Drugs, man. Mm, mm, mm. You know, mm. they put them drugs in the neighborhood, man. Mm. You know, and when they put them drugs in mm. the neighborhood, it just kind of just destroyed it. Mm. You know, uh, you know just killed self-esteem, man. You know, torn families apart. You know. Trust. You know, yeah, you know, it was a lot of trust in the neighborhood mm-hmm. the whole time. You know, mm-hmm. before. You know, true enough, there were gangs there, but you know, there was quite a bit of respect when it comes to a lot of the, you know, the, the older culture, mm-hmm. you know. But, you know, once the drugs got in the neighborhood, a lot of that just dissipated and went to, it went way, it just went, just way out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost like an epidemic, you know. Mm-hmm. Angela Reverth had re, um, told us that, um, there was a meeting at Oasis Graphic Arts with yeah. Mark Rovignon and a few others. Um, how, did, how did that meeting come to be organized? Um, I think Dave Markle organized that there meeting. Mm-hmm. You know, because you know, even though he was not, uh, you know, he was not really in the limelight. You know, he had, uh, you know, he kind of spearheaded a lot of that stuff that was going on there and helped mm-hmm. us to be able, with direction. Mm-hmm. You know, so Dave Monk had a, you know, he had a big impact on helping to make some changes or, or putting some positive in that community. Mm-hmm. What do you think the relevance of the mural is today? Do you think it has any relevance or has, has its purpose kind of been served? Or do you think, do you see any continuing relevance uh, uh, for that mural? I think for that mural, what it does is it still, you know, uh, you know it still has some impact on that, on, on, the, on the community because I, I think that because of the Women's Emergency Center over there, you know, mm-hmm. and them ladies are getting that opportunity to walk, you know, I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's old now though, right? I think that, you know, that if, if there's a way that, you know, I don't know if funds could be available mm-hmm. to yeah. try and refresh that yeah. or something yeah. like that, you yeah. know. It's just something about it that just makes you just, just, 
uh, it gives you hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. It really gives you hope because it makes you think about struggles that people went through in order to get here. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then I'm here now, you know, and then you know I'm like over there at that women's emergency shelter. You know, there's a lot of people over there that's down on their luck now. Mm-hmm. But you know, something like that could probably, you know, just I don't know, it could just trigger something to make them want to do something different with mm-hmm. their lives. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. who were um, who were some of the people who lived on Park Street um, at the time the mural was made, um, or in that area? You know, there was the Smiths over there, you know, the McNeils, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the West, Freddie West, you know, and, uh, oh, uh, I'm not sure if the river still staying over there or not, you know. Uh, uh, Do you remember what, what some of the, um, some of the attitudes of the people in the immediate, like, Houses around the mural were when what, during the process of it being oh, constructed. It was very receptive. It seems you know it was, it was kind of like you know, even though a group of us was out there painting, you know, and you know sandblasting and doing stuff like that to the mural, mm-hmm. there was a group of people that was also always across the street just watching, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. seeing how it's developing mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. you know. <clears throat> and it was always you know I, you know like you know pretty much. You know, you say say we work for eight hours and then after eight hours, we, you know, a lot of times it was 10, 12 hours before we'd even leave the site, you know, because of after eight hours and after cleaning up, you know, there's people always out there talking or just asking questions or just wanting to know, you know, you know um, when we're going to be done or just, you know, it was, it was just real nice. You know? mm-hmm. uh, I remember they had a funeral right over there at Salem Hospital, where, I mean Salem church mm-hmm. and um, Miles Davis mm. you know he come up he was uh, mm. he was uh, doing a, a I guess a solo or something at the at the funeral but he come up and he come up and he shook everybody's hand you know introduced himself you know and uh, you know complimented us on the mural and stuff like that man you know and it was just a really, really good feeling. And that was in the summer of 1978 that Miles Davis, wow, 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 I hadn't heard that, that's amazing. Yeah. And that was cool, man, you know, to see, you know, somebody famous come by and he, he, he was in a limo and mm-hmm. all that. And it was, <laughs> you know, it's just something that you yeah. don't normally see in yeah. the neighborhood, yeah. you know. Yeah. And to see somebody being real, real receptive to what we was doing over there mm-hmm. was really good. Now I've heard that there have been other murals um, in in the the North End neighborhood, and and a lot of those murals no longer exist. Do you remember what are some of the other murals that have existed? Um, well, you know, I thought there was one up there on on North Fifth Street, up there by the. Uh, uh, actually, it was a grocery store. Mm-hmm. It was in between Tremont and Beersley, I believe that's what it was. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and. And, and it was right next to our alley. I think there was like a little old bitty mural right there, you know. Uh, and that's the only one that I have recollections of. Well, actually, uh, no, you know, really, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, uh, I think, we, you know, during that summer, you know, it was really good weather. You know, we didn't have very many bad days, rain days or anything like that, you know. And a lot of things that was going on was, you know, it, it helped to build, build the kids' self-esteem. And I think the thing that was that I remember more than anything else is the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. After, after you know, uh, you know, each and every day we'd work on it, you know. And after that, you know, people would just hang around and we'd talk, you know. People would cook and bring us stuff out there, you know. Uh, you know, it was, it was, just kind of just made us feel like a big family right there. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. even though you know um, we wasn't cousins or brothers or sisters-in-laws or nothing like that. You know, we you know, we just kind of felt like you know there was a bit of closeness there between us. You know, and, and, and that was a good feeling right there. You know? mm-hmm. That's what I remember. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. and, and and you know I. I, I, I I think the thing that was really important, you know, that it, it, even if even if we wouldn't have had to got paid for it, and we would just have material, mm-hmm. you know, I think it would have been, you know, that would have been okay, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it, just the experience alone was, you know, was good enough. Mm-hmm. You know? 
because I got I did I got a chance to meet some good people, and every, and, and and if I'm not mistaken, every student that was that was employed to work on that mural went on to college. That's great. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was you know, and I think that was the goal mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. be able to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Uh, what do you, what do you what do you see as kind of um, I guess, for lack of a better term, the state of, of the African-American community today? I think it's lost. I think there's a lot of fear in there and there's lack of trust. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, I think more than anything, what, what the African-American community needs, I think it needs those pastors to stand up and start being recognized and showing up in the communities. Not long after that, about maybe six years ago, I... Uh, with my, I go to Canaan Baptist Church, mm -hmm, went to mm -hmm. my church to talk to my pastor about uh, possibly putting, uh, because of the drug epidemic, to be able to put something that was alternative in the community, like maybe a, uh, something, a safe house or some sort of a place that, you know, that if a person was suffering from a drug or an alcohol addiction, to be able to, you know, if they wanted to change at that moment, there was a, there was a safe haven right there where that person could go. You know, and there was either literature or something was there, you know, that could help that person or, or to be able to help make that change. Mm -hmm. Now, what they did was they did. That's how the, that's how the uh, safe house came mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what you know, the crazy thing about it is, is that was fine, you know, because they were using our biblical principles, mm -hmm. but it moved. It moved. See, it was right there. Right there on uh, Bradley. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Right there on Bradley and mm. Fifth. Mm. And it moved over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So actually, deal with you, what you had to impact a community, mm -hmm. you moved it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, so actually, you're defeating the purpose. And I can think the thing of it is, is when you look at things like that, what was the root of a movement? Mm -hmm. You know, is it money? Mm. You know, what is it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I just, I think that, I, I, I think that, you know, that through education, and, and, and like, you invited me to this thing last weekend, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and through something like that, you know, I think that there's going to help to impact the community, but I have a little, a healthy fear of mm -hmm. things about that too, you know, because uh, with the fiber optics and all that and stuff coming into the north end, you know, you know, is, is you going to after five years, you know, say, well, you know, is the, is the European community going to come in and say, well, we want this property, so let's uh, rezone the area so that we can move all the blacks out of there mm -hmm. and then we have this free mm -hmm. internet mm -hmm. over here, mm -hmm. you know, what is really going to happen? Or is there a way that we can protect, mm -hmm. you know, that community or, or you know, and, but I don't think there is a way. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you ever think that? Or not? I mean, I, it's definitely something we've talked about. And to to well, have you went into the community and asked somebody like the Roy Williams mm -hmm, or something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. you know, would you be willing to be a part of, be a yeah. board member yeah. or something like yeah. that? To, so you know, not not so much to be able to, you know, uh, uh, say yes, this can happen. Or, no, this can happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be able to help educate a community because yeah. you know the yeah. thing of it is, yeah. is you know, a person like a Roy Williams, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. He is, he is, uh, uh, you know, he is one of the people that has actually, you know, if you think about the community, he is the North End community, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And he's done a lot of service inside the community, mm -hmm. like the John, you know, John Lee Johnson mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, Vernon Barkstars, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. those people. Mm -hmm. What you have on that board over there, yeah. seem to be, is none of those. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. There are people that are outside of what's actually inside the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you got that, do, do, do you... I mean, you know, what, what you say, what you tell us is that, okay, we're willing to do this, but I don't know if we want anybody from in here to come yeah. in because, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, um, because I'm not as, as, as literate as you are. You know, or or yeah, you know, maybe maybe I'm not saying it right, but you know. No, no, I, I definitely understand. To, I mean, yeah. To a certain extent, you know, can I include somebody mm -hmm. in the community involved? I see you guys have Miss Bridgewater there, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm talking about somebody like the Roy Williams mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know that, you know, maybe if if you talk to somebody over there, or maybe if you see the UCDB was willing to talk to somebody over there, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, it would be good, but you know, 